Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to do an example that looks a lot like the previous example with one big difference that the voltage supply is no longer a steady state voltage but a sinusoidally varying voltage. It changes by time according to the equation. E as a function of time equals the maximum voltage times the sine of omega t where omega is equal to 2 pi f f being the frequency of the voltage changes. We still have an inductor, we still have a resistor and we still close the switch at time equals zero. So again, we're going to use Kirchhoff's rules to find the current in the circuit by summing up all the voltages around the circuit. So when we sum up all the voltages, that should add up to zero. So we have the initial voltage. So we have a voltage rise, which is E as a function of time, minus the voltage drop across the resistor, which is I times R, minus the voltage dropped across the inductor, which is minus L times DI dt and that's going to be equal to zero. Rearranging the equation, multiplying both sides by negative one, moving this to the other side of the equation, dividing everything by L, and the IDT being I prime, I can now write this as I prime plus R over L times I, because I'm dividing everything by L, and this will become positive when I multiply both sides by negative one. This moves to the other side, so this is equal to E as a function of time, which is E sub naught, times the sine of omega t. So that's the differential equation I'm trying to solve. This is in the general format of I prime plus some function of time times I equals some other function of time. So this is the, the general format of a linear homogeneous, while well in this case it's a non-homogeneous, first order differential equation. All right, the solution to that can be found by saying that I as a function of time is equal to e to the minus h times the quantity, the integral of e to the h times r as a function of time plus a constant of integration. Realizing, of course, that h is equal to the integral of f of t dt. And in this case, f of t will be r over l so this is equal to R over L times dt is the integral of that. So H will simply be R over L times time. And that means that the general solution here can be written as I as a function of time is equal to E to the minus R over L times time times the quantity, the integral of E to the R over L times time times R. And R is going to be equal to this which is E sub naught, so times E sub naught times the sine of omega t times dt plus a constant of integration. All right, all that looks pretty straightforward so far until we realize that we have to integrate E to the R over L times time times the sine of omega t. That can only be done by applying the integration by parts twice and so let me show you how to get started on that. So what we're going to do here is imagine we're going to integrate uh, u times dv, which is equal to u times v minus the integral of v times du. In this case, we're going to let u equal, how about the sine of omega t dt, or just simply, well, just like this, omega t, and dv is going to be equal to e to the r over l times time. So the first time you do this, you go du, so du is equal to the derivative of this, which is omega times the cosine of omega t, and here the integral of that, that would be equal to l over r times e to the r over l uh, times time. And then of course, this would be v, not dv, but that would be v, so then you go u times v minus the integral of v times du. And then you'll have to do it again. And when you do it twice and you plug everything in, eventually the, the solution then will look like this. So now you'll end up with i as a function of time is equal to e to the minus r over l times time times, let me write down what you end up with. So we had e sub naught divided by r squared plus omega squared l squared times e to the r over l times time times the quantity 
r times the sine of omega t minus omega l times the cosine of omega t plus a constant of integration. All right, so then you end up with an equation looking like that. So all you have to do, of course, all you have to do, it takes a little leg work, but all you have to do is take the integration by parts twice, and you end up with this particular equation. Now we can, in, now we can simplify that even a little bit further. Because let's say that we have a times the cosine, or I guess we start with the sine. Let's say we have a times the sine of omega t minus b times the cosine of omega t. That can be simplified using some trigonometric identities to the following. That is equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared times the sine of omega t minus the phase angle, where the phase angle is equal to the arc tangent of b over a. So using that same technique, we can take that and simplify this even further. We can say that i as a function of time is equal to e to the minus r over l times time times e sub naught divided by r squared plus omega squared l squared times e to the r over l times time times, and then we apply this, we have the square root of r squared plus omega squared l squared times the sine of omega t minus the phase angle. Remember that in this case, a plus constant of integration, we can't forget about that, where the phase angle in this case would be the arc tangent of, that would be uh, omega l over r. All right, so at this point, we can simplify things just a little bit further. We can multiply this in here. We can divide this by that. And then we get the following. I as a function of time is equal to E sub naught divided by the square root of R squared plus omega squared L squared. Omega squared L squared, all right? Multiply this times this, they negate each other because that's a negative exponent, positive exponent, times the sine of omega t minus the phase angle, plus a constant of integration times e to the minus r over l times time. And that would then be the general solution of that differential equation. If you're wondering what that looks like, notice that here we have a time-varying oscillation of omega t, and here we have an exponential decay. Combined, it looks something like this. The current will have a part that will decay over time, like this, and now it has a part that will just continue to oscillate forever, as long as the driving function is there. And so what we have is we have something that looks like this, coupled with this transient portion of the functions we call it, which would simply lift the first oscillations up to a higher value. So that means that this will look something like this. And slowly converge to the final function like that. So the red is kind of representative of what this particular current as a function of time will look like. Remember that the vertical axis will be current and the horizontal axis will be time. And so that is now what we call the general solution to the original differential equation that is formulated by taking in a, a circuit like this with a time varying voltage, a resistor, and an inductor in a single circuit, and at time equals zero, we close the switch, and that will then be the result of that. That's how it's done.